All right, so for our last day of class, we need to talk about a marketing strategy, backlinks, content creation. And I had promised on the first day that we would spend a little bit of time if you would like to show your website. I'll put it up here on the board. I'll give it a quick analysis. We can talk about it. That'll be at the end of the day. But before that, I've got a few documents for you. So you want to double-click computer window to open up the network folder open the computer then go to classroom data drive Z double click that scroll down to find our class which is campus SEO and the documents you want for today you want to drag a copy of campus SEO 3 backlinks, drag that to your desktop, and you want a copy of um, Client Marketing Strategy. So drag those two to your desktop, or if you have a USB drive, you can drag that over. We'll look at the marketing strategy first, so copy that over. Uh, you don't need to print the, you don't need to print those at this moment. Can print them later. And everything else we've done previously is also there. So we'll first look at the marketing strategy. You should have gotten that <coughs> Word doc, client marketing strategy. Go ahead and open that up. This is similar to the uh, uh, com uh, client uh, company profile that we looked at previously. So we'll look at this one. It should be editable. Again, if you'd like to fill it out, you can, but this is not any sort of homework. You can do it for yourself. I can look at it if you'd like, and I can give you opinions. But this is a variation of a document that we would do for a client. This is one of the most important ones we would do for a client because if they hire us to do a website that's something rather tangible that we can provide them if they hire us to do SEO and social media and all of that that's a little bit more difficult in that we can't simply get hired for X amount of money per month to do SEO for them we have to have a plan we have to have a strategy that company is trying to accomplish something online trying to sell a product promote something etc. So this document, a variation of this document, is one of the things we do early on. And we, we insist upon that over and over with a client. They come to us and they say, well, we need someone to run our Facebook. That, that's all we need. Just, you know, how much are you going to charge us for Facebook? And right away we say, okay, do you have a marketing plan, marketing strategy? And they say, uh, what's that? So again, if they don't have a plan, if they don't have a strategy, well, whatever amount of money you waste on Facebook or time and effort you waste on YouTube or website that you build, if you don't have a plan, why are you online? Any effort that we're going to do is, is going to fall short of them getting good rankings, of them getting good traffic, of them getting more sales without a strategy. So let's look at this. There's these big questions here. What do you want to accomplish? Who is your target audience? Do you have an aspirational competition? Do you have a vision statement? And what's your unique selling proposition? What do you want to accomplish? You have a presence online for a reason. Are you trying to sell something? Are you trying to build awareness? Are you artistic and want people to appreciate your work? Do you have a group you belong to that needs more members? Take a moment to write about what you want to accomplish with your online presence which is often your website, or it could be your Facebook, or it could be your YouTube, whatever, your online presence, your newsletter. Uh, as an example here, Vic.co wishes to create a powerful social media presence because we want to interact with existing customers and through word of mouth reach new customers. We want to connect with people on Instagram in a very visual way. So this fictional company is saying that it wants to uh, reach old and new customers. This company wants to use an online presence to reach and to hold customers. Instagram is mentioned. 
as a as perhaps a a target of what to focus on a bit more. And so for yourself, something like that as well. If you simply put sell products, that's okay. But if I was grading that assignment, you'd probably get a C minus with that answer. To get a better grade on that, if this were a real assignment, you'd want more detail. Okay, to sell products. Um, to sell products to first-time buyers, to reach an audience of new buyers, to pivot the direction. I was We were originally trying to sell products to these people, now we're trying to sell to these people. Our product is brand new and updated. It's better than before. So we're going to try to market it and sell it and reach people in a different way. So the more detailed you are, if you were going for a grade, the better. But forget about grades. You're learning all of this stuff to get something tangible, aren't you? To get a website that ranks higher, maybe products that sell more, and so forth. Instagram is mentioned simply because that might be a, a good network to get into. There's lots of social networks. The short answer is you need to be on all of them. But the long answer is, well, I don't have the time, I don't have the budget, I don't know what to write, I don't know how to write. So to pick one or two is a better strategy. Instagram just reached 500 million users very recently, maybe one or two weeks ago. Half a billion people use Instagram. Maybe you've heard of it, and you've heard, well, that's the place where people share their uh, photos of their food. Yes, but it's also the place where companies reach out and find an audience. So it's one of many social networks. Whatever you're trying to do online, you have to think about who is your target audience. It's important to focus on one. It's nice to say that everyone would be interested in your product, but it just isn't true in the real world. Who are the people that would like to know about your product? What are their age ranges, genders, economic groups, musical style, etc.? In short, who would care about your product? In essence, we are creating a persona of a potential client. So, real-world example, a few years ago, someone came to us and wanted uh, a website and social media and such for their product. We asked them early on, of course, who's your target audience? Who are you selling this to? They said, of course, everyone. But digging deeper into it, that was completely the wrong answer, because they were selling baby strollers. So, obviously, no, not everyone cares about a baby stroller. Not even parents, after a certain age, care about baby strollers that product that everyone would want is a really small demographic, really. As we further refined that with this sort of activity with that person, it was deci he decided upon that actually his target demographic is more specifically first-time parents, first-time Latino parents. That's who his target audience was, and that's much more attainable than saying everyone. I'm going to try to get everyone to buy my product. If, it's, if he's focusing on first-time Latino parents, that is much easier to reach. And so what I want to hear about possible ideas of creating a persona, that's something, again, that's really big in marketing. A persona, a fictional potential client. Um, and this can be as complex as writing a name and a birth date and favorites and hobbies and education and all of that. We're inventing a person. This is the person. Janet Smith is who we're trying to sell our product to. We made up this person, but that person exists. That person with this education, with these hobbies, with these interests exists. And that's your target audience. And therefore, we're going to try on social media to reach Janet Smith. We're going to try to create content on our website blogs, for example, to reach Janet Smith, we're going to reach a target audience, a persona, a fictional person that does represent a real person. Obviously, yes, that's a lot of work, a lot of effort. This are All of these things are things to think about. The more you implement, the better. When we do this for a client, we have to figure all of this out because whatever the client is trying to sell, we need to reach that person specifically. There's an example here. The people who want to hire Vic.co are people that are trendy, but know what they want. They are people that are in their 30s who are successful, own their own company, need a website, and know the value of web design. All right, so I said an age range. Obviously, Vic.co web design company could make a website for any 
one at all, any age range. We want to focus on this particular age range because also those that own their own company. So perhaps, you know, entrepreneurs, uh, you know, go get them, uh, go get them kind of attitude people that we want to work with. We could easily, <coughs> Vic.co could get hired to build a website for any kind of company, uh, any kind of demographics, but we want to focus on who we feel will give the best product to, the best result. They need a website, they know the value of web design, and that's in this case literal and figurative. Figurative in that they know a good website will have people wanting to buy. A good website will have people browsing it easily. A good website will attract uh, traffic. But a good website is not a $250 website. It's not a $500 website. It's not a $2,000 website. It could be much more, depending on its complexity. So right here, we're not going to go for the penny pinchers. We're not going to try to get hired. They're 30 years old, they own their own company, but they want a website for $500. Well, here's our business card, we'll be in touch. We want to deal with someone that knows that the kind of website that they're asking for, with a shopping cart and all of that, is going to be $7,000. And they're not going to bat an eye at, at that, because they know quality. They know what it costs, what the investment is to get something out of it. Question? Just so I can understand a little bit better, the reason you're honing in on exactly like the 30s is because the design of your website is you were targeting 40s or 50s for this Yes, the target audience, exactly. If I'm reaching, you know, people in retirement age, I don't want to have a big flashy kind of website with a lot going on, perhaps. I want it to be straightforward for that demographic. That's one of the reasons why you, you want to focus. So whatever you're creating for that audience should be focused. That's why I specified. We can make a website for any age range, but we're choosing this one because of the design that we will provide. Right here, I'm saying one particular persona, but multiple ones can be created. Think about this. What do Coca-Cola, Dasani, Water, and Powerade all have in common? They're all owned by Coca-Cola. They're all owned by the same company. But all three of those products have a different target audience. One target audience wants one version of sugar water, and one other audience wants a different version. One audience wants Coca-Cola that's refreshing and all of that, and the other one wants Powerade after the workout. They're both variations of sugar water, except for the water, uh, but that's <coughs> it's just glorified tap water. So all three of those have a specific demographic. The Powerade person doesn't want the Coke because I'm working out. I don't want a Coke. I want Powerade. Then the other person is, well, I'm health conscious. I want the water. I don't want the Powerade. But it's all from the same company. Each company I mean, that company targets each persona with their particular product. So it's not far-fetched at all to be talking about this in an SEO class, because that's what Coca-Cola does. On their Twitter, to reach a certain audience, they're going to uh, tweet certain things. On YouTube, they're going to create certain videos. They're going to use certain keywords to reach a certain audience, because the Dasani audience doesn't relate as much. There's some overlap, of course, with the Powerade audience doesn't relate as much with the Coca-Cola audience, even the Diet Coke audience. Each one is an audience, and these big companies are good at that, to atomize all of the audiences into specific groups and then target to them, market to them. Do you have an aspirational competition? It's good to have role models, both in life and in business. Is there a business you see that makes you think, I want to be like that? Or a business that makes you think, I want to do that, but better? List a company, person, brand, etc. that you feel is in competition with you, but that you would like to emulate. Why do you want to emulate them? Vic.co feels that XY Designs is our aspirational competition because they are well known in the field of web design, and their style is unique and modern. Okay, what this is saying is, uh, you're gonna have competition. Unfortunately, you're not gonna be the only realtor in your area. You're not gonna be the only web designer in your area. You're not gonna be the only bakery. You're not gonna be the only family-run 
gluten-friendly organic bakery in Hillcrest. You're not going to be the only one, unfortunately. It may be in your particular immediate area you have competition, or on the larger stage you have competition. So you're going to have competition. What of your competition, or which of your competition, do you see they're doing it well? They're doing it right? I want to do that. I want to do that better. I want to see what they're doing to see what I'm not doing to get better at it. Remember we had the competitor analysis early on. We looked up websites. You looked up websites about who else is your competition. That's your competition. Aspirational. You want to aspire to be like them and surpass them. Real world example. One of our clients, the one I've mentioned before, Aquies Texcoco, they're a Mexican food restaurant. We did this activity with the client, with the owner and said, who's your comp aspirational competition? And he said, Phil's Barbecue. Now, how many of you know Phil's Barbecue? Most of us here. If you don't, it's one of the big names in barbecue joints in San Diego. Is it the best? That's always up for debate. Everything is. But Phil's Barbecue is one of the most well-known in that niche. Maybe you prefer Croom's Barbecue, or maybe you prefer, perform, prefer uh, Little... What's that one called? Little John's or something. There's different ones. Barbecue joints. This client said, Phil's Barbecue is who I want to be like. Well, one's a Mexican food restaurant, and one's, you know, classic American barbecue. You might say, well, that, that's not competition. They're not, they're not competing with each other. You don't have to be exactly competing with the exact same niche. Texcoco didn't say, we're competing with Pollo Loco you know, Mexican food restaurant, they said, we're competing with Phil's Barbecue. We're trying to be like them because Phil's Barbecue is well known for barbecue in San Diego. Phil's Barbecue has a line out the door every day of the week. Phil's Barbecue is recipe uh, is popular. So Texcoco uh, wants that, to have a line out the door every day of the week, to be synonymous with good Mexican food in San Diego, to have a, a, a dish that everyone wants. So for yourself, you have to figure out what, based on our competitor analysis, what other company is doing it well. That's why we went to their websites to see. They've got social media on their site. I don't. Uh, they have a nice clean design and checking a lot of other competitors they have it too, and mine doesn't. Mine is too busy. So what's the competition doing that you can do, but better? I'm not saying, of course, to copy them. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, what are they doing? What can you synthesize? What can you see that they've done and make it your own? How can you change it? How can you do it better? How can you put a new spin on it? So competition. Vision statement. A mission statement that we saw previously tells the world where you stand. A vision statement tells the world where you're going. Write a statement that makes predictions about what you want to accomplish as a company or brand. You may set a time horizon. Vic.co will be known for providing eye-catching web design for San Diego's most elegant restaurants. So Vic.co, fictional uh, web design company. Yeah. The goal of this company is to be known for websites for San Diego elegant restaurants. Vic.co could make a website for any company, but we've already decided early on 30 year olds that own their own business. Further specified, we're going to focus on making websites for restaurants. That's still lots and lots and lots of clients that could hire Vic.co. Further specifying, elegant restaurants. We're not going to make a website for some of these hole-in-the-wall taco shops or you know, mom-and-pop shops. That could be a demographic that could be lucrative. But based on our decision here, this is who we're trying to reach. This is who we're going to try our hardest to attract and will be our demographic and our bread and butter who hires us and so forth. 
we saw last week, we can go to the college's website and look at their mission statement. I believe there was also a vision statement there. So the point of that is check out the websites of various companies, poke around in the About screen, maybe sometimes it's under the Investors screen, and see if you can find examples. Here it is, Vision. There's Mission and there's Vision. The mission to provide ongoing learning opportunities preparing diverse individuals for career advancement, a college education, or enriched lives through good health and personal fulfillment. That's what this college is trying to do right now. So mission is about what are you doing right now? Vision. San Diego Continuing Ed will be the state's leading non-credit educational provider based on quality of services offered and variety of courses available assisting students to transform their lives. All right, so it could easily say something like, we provide free classes. And again, if that was a grade, if that was something turning in for a grade, that'd be a C plus. This is an A plus. This is very specific. It's focused. Uh, it relates to everything that this website, this company, this institute is about. And the point of writing all of this stuff also is to build these keywords. We're talking over and over about keywords that people search for to help you get found. This vision statement is full of keywords. The mission is full of keywords. I'm going to go on Google, I'm going to go on Bing, whatever, and search for non-credit classes. Or I'm going to search for free courses. Or I'm going to search for personal development. Quality free classes. All of these things that are being written on this page, the search engines will pick up will find. And when someone searches lifelong learning, that's a keyword that people are starting to use. Lifelong learning. You know, continuing education is the classic term. Lifelong learning is the modern version of it. I'm going to keep learning something. Just because I finished high school, just because I finished college, I'm not, I'm not going to stop learning. If I have the time, I'm going to take a free class once in a while. I'm going to keep learning lifelong learning. And so this whole page full of keywords and throughout the whole site, all of this had to be developed by one or two or three or a dozen people. It's a variation of what we're talking about with all of this stuff. <clears throat> this is an exercise, a stealth exercise to think about keywords, these keywords we've been talking about. And at the very end, the USP, Unique Selling Proposition. What do you provide your customers that no one else can? What makes you stand out from the rest? How do you uniquely solve their problems? Answer the question, why? That is, why would a client hire you? Vic.co is based in San Diego, and many from our team graduated from Southwestern College, San Diego State, UCSD. We therefore know the local culture. We can create compelling websites that cater to San Diego companies. That again is defining our demographic. We can make a website for anyone in all of California, in all of the US, in all of the world. But we're specifying at the top here San Diego restaurants, elegant ones, ones that know websites cost more than $5,000. Good websites. Um, and here we're further specifying well, we can provide a good website to a San Diego audience because we're San Diego. We grew up here, we were educated here, we live here, we know the culture of San Diego. We know about not getting on the 5 at 4 o'clock southbound on a Friday. We know these things. We live here. That's what we can provide. If someone gets hired, if this potential customer wants to hire someone in New York, they can probably make a great website, but they don't know the local culture. They don't know San Diego nuances. Is it? Does it matter to every single company? No. For some companies, they're just going to look at the bottom figure. Oh, you're going to charge us 4000 That one's going to charge us $3,000. we will save that 1000 Thank you. But what they could be losing is all of this that you are uniquely providing because of whatever your vision is, your mission, your skills, your abilities, your product. And a lot of this very, sounds very prosaic, very artistic, yes. But you don't think that all of these things are thought of and planned on all the big companies? You don't think something like this happened for El Pollo Loco, Chipotle, McDonald's, Nike, 
this college, Southwestern College, UCSD, all of this is marketing. There are college majors where you can get PhDs in this stuff because this is marketing, this is advertising, this is our modern society. <coughs> this is just a variation of it, it's online. All of this that we're doing for SEO is online. That wall right there in the real world is like <coughs> SEO, is like a search engine, kind of. You walk into this room and you see there's a graphic design class coming up. Someone wrote over here also, there's a web design class. This is marketing, advertising. You would have never have seen this unless you walked in here and found out about it. Well, in the digital world, we have the ability to reach an audience much more directly. If you never walked in, you wouldn't have known about that class. If you're not looking at those monitors that we have outside, flashing classes, you wouldn't know about those classes. Advertising. So modern SEO is tied together so much with SEM. Remember, we've mentioned that before. SEO, search engine optimization. Remind me, what's SEM? Search engine marketing. So this document that we're working with here and the other one that we looked at last time, it's not just about, let's put together a list of 10 keywords and how do I put them on my site? That's the minimal thing. It's all of these things together, SEO, SEM, social media, blogging, all of that stuff. That's why modern SEO, it's not difficult, but it's complicated, I believe. And something doesn't have to be complicated to be difficult. Complicated to me is there's a lot of steps and a lot of things to do. But each one of these things individually is not that hard to write about. Maybe you don't have the best idea right now, but as you think about it and ask other people in your company, it comes together. So it's complicated, not extremely hard. I'm going to draw a uh, picture here because there's an important concept here about why. Answer the question why. This is comes from an author, Simon Sinek. Perhaps you might have heard of him or not, but Simon Sinek has these concepts of the golden circle, circles. I'm going to draw some circles here, ovals, circles, and inside I'm going to put smaller circles, and each of these circles is named on the outside, we've got the, the what circle. The next one in is the why, I'm sorry, the how circle. And the innermost circle is the why circle. These are questions that can be applied in a variety of ways. Originally, one of Simon's theories is this is all about leadership, but it also applies to business, entrepreneurship. So how this matters to us. So fictional company, Vic.co. It's a web design company. The what? We provide web design. We make websites. That's the what of Vic.co. Well, Vic.co and two million other companies. The what covers a lot of companies. A lot of companies do web design. The next circle in how? Well, we do web design, <coughs> but we use, uh, we use WordPress and WooCommerce plugins. Okay, it's narrowed the field a little bit more. Not everyone does web design that way. The how of that company has narrowed it down a little bit more, less competition. Then the innermost why serves to, to winnow even more competition. Why do we do web design? Going back to the example, we like it. We believe in web design is a powerful tool to reach an audience. We are a local company that will make a website for a local company. This is often the hardest one to answer. 
what you do, pretty easy. How you do it, relatively easy. Why you do it, that's often hard. Why are you a realtor? Why are you a web designer? Why are you a baker? Why are you a fencing company? That's going to be harder to answer and to differentiate you, to separate you from your competition. But that's the part uh, of the document here, the USP. What's unique about you that'll get you hired compared to someone else that also does web design? If you do a search, you'll find him and all about him and free videos all about these concepts. 18 to 40 minute long videos so all of this stuff. Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K. And uh, he's got a book and all of that. But what matters for us, again, is that is those circles. You can define the what of your company, the how of your company, but the why of your company is hopefully what gets you the clients. Why are you selling that baby stroller? Why are you in the business of uh, uh, business of whatever? There's so many businesses out there, I can't think of one. So those are the golden circles. That relates back to our document over here, the USP. So yes, it is a lot of highbrow conceptional stuff. Do you have to do this to do SEO? No, but it could be a, more of an uphill battle. And at the very least, if you write one sentence for each of these to get you to think about it, that's much better than never have thought about this and keep asking yourself, why don't I get more customers? Why don't I get more hits? Why don't I get more traffic? So, general questions on this document? All right, so again, uh, you don't need to fill this in, you don't need to turn it in. I can look at it if you want. You can uh, do this yourself. You can get other people in the company to have an opinion on it. The problem about doing that, though, is if you give other people the chance to give an opinion, everyone has an opinion. And so then this document will never get filled out. Everyone wants to say something about it. So when I, my company deals with this stuff with a client, we always say, we want to talk to the decision makers. We want to talk to those that can actually make the decision, not just everyone that can have an opinion, but whoever we're talking to in the company, they need to implement it. So same thing for yourself. If you're gonna have other people chiming in on this, it'd be good if they have the direct influence to do something about it. I'm gonna put this graphic in the network folder in a little while. That's the, the golden circles.